SPL. After eight straight seasons in the big league, we're live at their farewell against Falkirk. Last week's win guaranteed your seventh spot in the SPL, which is Falkirk's highest finish since 1995. What's been the key to your improvement? The boys in my dressing room, their work ethic, their response to anything new that we bring to the club and they embrace it and they endorse it and they get on with it. But most of all, you know, the spirit and the work ethic uh, coupled with some good football uh, football uh, performances and all credit to them. They deserve uh, all the plaudits that they're getting. And you've managed to re-sign this week Kenny Milne, Jack Ross and Russell Latterby. How glad are you to get those back on board for next season? Yeah, well, we're delighted because uh, what I just say is these guys are a big part of that. You know, they, they lead for the front, from the front, they take responsibility. Uh, and um, so we're delighted to get that tied up. I have to say this, you know, last year we finished, uh, budgeted to finish 11th. Uh, we finished 7th. So a remarkable achievement. Expectation levels next year. Um, I know what the fans are after, to uh, 6. have to understand there's so much going on at the club in terms of infrastructure. We've still got a stadium to, uh, to build. So, you know, it's no... Uh, a re unrealistic achievement uh, to try and go and do that. We're going to try and strive to do that, but we're just going to have to be uh, keep our feet firmly on the ground. But with these boys in that dressing room, uh, it wouldn't surprise me if we can go and um, you know try and reach the heights. Best of luck today, John. Cheers, thanks. <laughs> Jack Ross, Kenny Milne and Russell Latterby all signed one-year deals this week, but it's Alan Gow's last game to Falkirk. He's off to Rangers. Darren Barr won the Club of the Year award after an outstanding season in the heart of defence. Pat Craig is still injured, so to Dean Holden. Well, again, similar to Dunfermline. Falkirk have been pretty solid at the back, certainly Barr and, and Kenny Milne have a fine seasons between them. And Lee McCraig and Thompson again narrow in midfield, and Latterby still producing some decent football at his age in the SPL. Finnegan up for it with Gow, who I think has got a lot to prove on his way to Rangers, but his form has not been great of late. John Hughes eager for the game to start. It's a good end of the season for Falkirk. They're looking for a third win on the bounce, and they will finish top of the bottom six. Dunfermline, sadly for them bottom of the SPL and relegated to the first division but they do have a Scottish Cup final to look forward to next week against Celtic the first team ever to reach the Cup final and be relegated in the same season not quite the weather for that 
them and maybe leaving the SPL behind, but they won't want to go quietly. But they do need to lift morale after that crushing blow. And Inverness, there's a cup final waiting for Dunfermline. But Falkirk have played some neat and tidy football at times this season, easy on the eye on their day. And but for that losing streak of eight successive defeats, they would have finished in the top six. As it is, they have more points than Hibbs right now. John Hughes continues to work wonders. Roddy McKenzie getting a run out in goal for Dunfermline. Doris De Vries with a wrist injury, but he should be okay for the cup final. Dunfermline have had a week to stew over their relegation, but they need to try and get it out of their system ahead of the Scottish Cup final next week. The match. If only Stephen Kenny had begun a longer run at the relegation battle, but then Fermlin are heading down. Last game of the season at home to Falkirk ahead of the Scottish Cup final. Craig Burley and Ian Crocker. It is Rob. Some Fermlin may be down, but they're ending the season as the SPL's form team. Too little, too late as it turned out. Falkirk also finishing strongly. They're after a third straight win. Eddie Smith is the man in charge. And Falkirk are looking for a clean sweep over Dunfermline this season. It'll be four wins in four meetings if they triumph today against this much-changed Dunfermline team. Muirhead has stayed in, though, and Scott Wilson is back from suspension. Asking a bit too much of Jamie McCundy, though. John Hughes has had another terrific season at Falkirk. Very close to making the top six on extremely limited resources. Well, that's a beat. Ross. It's very windy out there, which might cause one or two problems. Kenny Mill, one of three players who signed one-year deals this week. And there are a few more offers on the table. Being mulled over. Crawford. Mill up towards Finnegan, but Bamba keeping him in check. Darren Young. Now Greg Shields, the captain, will be hoping to get his hands on the Scottish Cup next week. It's going to be a big ask, of course, with Celtic waiting for them at Hampden. Shields. Darren Young. Darren Barr will clear it. And what a season he's had. A very blustery day in the Kingdom of Fife. Muirhead. Good pass there from Scott Muirhead, but I just wonder how much missing out in this final day of the season in terms of it being something to play for that's going to affect them firmly, especially for next week. Just lost that little bit of momentum. Things were going so well for Stephen Kenny and his players in the last six weeks, but really disappointing performance and result at Inverness and poor mistakes as well as cost them. And they've got to pick themselves up. Falkirk will finish seventh, whatever happens today, their highest position since the mid-90s. Yeah, and let me tell you, their fans have come along today, Falkirk. I don't think they're too fussed about seeing the game. They've come here to rub a few noses in it. They certainly started that very early, chanting at the confirmed fans. Alan Gow. Oh, he's picked out Russell Latterby, and this could be promising for Falkirk. No great power from Latterby, though, and the moment gone.
Well, they should be taking it first time, I think. Russell Latipi and Gow did well down the left, but as he swings it in here, he gets in a little bit too early. If he holds his run just a little bit, then he takes that ball in the volley. Free kick here for Dunfermline. Simmons will take it. Dakan unable to do much about it. And Jack secures a throw for Falkirk. These two teams have established quite a local rivalry over the years. Dunfermline certainly due a result against Falkirk, having lost the three previous meetings this season. But Alan Gow is going to release Carl Finnegan. Scott Wilson goes across. Lima. Muirhead. Would have got a free kick, but Eddie Smith has played the advantage. Scobie. Gao. In his farewell appearance for Falkirk before he heads to Ibrox. And he's earned a corner. Yeah, and the one thing I think he's got to do is perform better than he has been doing of late, Alan Gout. As his forms, as I said earlier, has dipped, no doubt about that, and playing in the cauldron at is Glasgow and he's going to have to do it week in, week out. That's if he gets an opportunity. Gow makes himself available to give Latterby a better angle. Well, Latterby will give that angle to Gow. And McCunny turns it behind for another corner. And this corner may well go directly into the danger area. Ball's blown off the uh, corner spot. Alan Gow standing nearby, and he's going to have to hold the ball, I think. Might have to take a short one at this rate. Muirhead on a surge. Gao up against McCunney gets involved as well. Vermin couldn't quite take the relegation fight to the wire. A goalkeeping error and a deflection at Inverness, sending them down last week. one of uh, several players who have been offered one-year contracts. He's still thinking about his offer. Kenny Milne will take this, it's gonna hang in the wind. 
Lima. Thompson. Ross. Bar. It's actually his first season in the full Kirk team. And it really couldn't have gone much better for Darren Barr. Falkirk's player of the year. Darren Young. McCunney. That's popped off Greg Shields. Recently returned from injury. Confirmed in the first team to be relegated and reach the cup final in the same season. Muirhead. Bamba. <laughs> Stephen Simmons, who likes Stevie Crawford, and is making his return today. Crawford. Virgil. Darren Young for Greg Shields. That's a four cut throw. Well, it was the first half decent pass of the play, you'd have to say there from Confirmer, but once again it comes to nothing. Just can't seem to get in behind the Falkirk fullbacks at the moment and get any width in the game. And so far they've I can't really remember them putting any quality at all into the Falkirk box. Wilson. Here's Bamba. Casper Smiker will come and collect that. It's hopefully not his last game for Falkirk. They're desperate to get him back again next season on loan from Manchester City, but of course uh, that all depends on who the new manager might be there. Kirk's second choice keeper, Jerome Lambers, is uh, definitely leaving to go back to Holland, so it will be an area that John Hughes will need to sort out. Virgil could be in here. And the challenge by Barr, he got the ball. Well, that's where Virgil's at his best. When that ball goes in behind, using his pace and his sharpness, but you'd have to say Barr has had a fine season. Time to tackle perfectly. Well, your head was brushed aside then by Finnegan, but nothing was given. Lima. Ross. Barr. Now Thompson. Latapi. It's a neat move this from Falkirk. Thompson. Craig. And away by Wilson, and now Freddie Dakan. Paul Kirk are more than capable of uh, spraying passes around. This man is usually at the heart of it, Latterby. Craig. Hughes and Stephen Kenny seeing out the SPL season and in Kenny's case it's first division football next season but they'll be looking for a quick return to the top flight well that all depends on who, who they can keep at the club in Fairman and what the resources are going to be what players what contracts Stephen Kenny can dish out if you can keep the majority of them, 
then you'd have to say you'd find something to come straight back up, but sometimes it's not as simple as that. But they should never have got themselves into that position in the first place. Looking at the players they have, I mean, you look at Falkirk, you know, finishing seventh in the, in the SPL table, with the players and resources they've got for John Hughes. A terrific job, but from the family's point of view, it's just, you know, it's been a woeful season, it really has. Scooby. That's going to clear Finnegan. Also today, Dundee United are taking on Motherwell at Tannadice. And St Mirren facing Inverness Kelly Thistle at Love Street. We'll have all the goal news from there. So there's a few happy faces at, uh, at the Football Writers Awards last week when Gus McPherson and Morris Malpass relieved that it wasn't going to the last day of the season with the pressure that, that would bring with it. Stevie Crawford. Now McCunny. And Birchall. And Dakan. Simmons with a shot. Finnegan chasing. Shields. Muirhead. Crawford. Crawford has Dakan supporting. He's also got Darren Young nearby. Young's cross comfortably cleared though by Milne. Young tries again. Simmons. Bamba. He gets the free kick, saw Bamba. Head going across to take this with his left foot. Firmly looking for an early breakthrough. Scott Wilson rose well. Dakam. Simmons. Bamba. Here's Darren Young. Virtual lets it go for Crawford. Darren Young gets a free kick off Stephen Thompson in a useful position for Dunfermline. Well, they got a little bit lucky there because Virtual hit the little dummy, but Crawford was on his toes, was on his heels, sorry, wasn't ready for it, and Thompson eventually committed the, the foul, which gives Dunfermline a decent opportunity. Scott Morrison looking like he might have a go. Darren Young also there. Scott Muirhead rather takes it and it's over and out. Well, it's not easy from that distance out, but it's, well, it's not a particularly good effort. Later, you can vote for your Bank of Scotland man of the match. Those are the numbers to call or text, and if you agree with Craig Burley's choice and you're picked down as the winner, you'll get a signed shirt from the man of the match himself. Thompson. Latifi. Lima. Thompson. Latifi. He's going to feed Ross. Thompson. 
Scobie, Latapi, Lima, Finnegan. Plenty of passes, but what's going to come at the end of it? Scobie. Well, it's all down the middle. We're playing all down the middle, there's about 15, 16 bodies all within. The penalty box, no width at all, try to squeeze it down through the heart of that Dunfermline defence at every opportunity. And it's not going to work. Far too tight and congested. And you can imagine with the type of game it is today with really nothing to play for that both these teams would come and just have a go and go out and try and get some goals and finish the season on a high. And it's, well, it's all a wee bit cagey at the moment. Latapi, Sol Bamba, Stephen Simmons looking for somewhere to go, Birchill on the chase, Jack Ross stooping, and Greg Shields merely knocking it behind for a goal kick and it's been a rather tepid 20 minutes so far at East End Park. But the Celtic manager is here, checking out the uh, Cup final opponents, ahead of that big date at Hampden next week. Well, I know he's had his hip done, but does that stop you shaving? <laughs> not, not quite sure about that one, but uh, I don't think he'll uh, be too worried about what he's seeing at the moment, although I'm sure it'll be a different than Fairland side in terms in terms of the way they approach the game next week. Obviously a lot more to play for, big stage. Finnegan wants it back, and he's got it back, and this could be the opener, second chance. Horribly wasted by Finnegan. Well, that's great play from Falkirk. Clever play, Finnegan, good movement. Lovely little flick from Gow, and the goalkeeper was a bit hesitant. Got to sell out it in the end, but Finnegan Lacked a little bit of belief in there. Scobie. Away by Bamba. Milne. Finnegan. Gao, who set up Finnegan for that chance. Latapi. Blocked by Shields. Latapi will have to try again. He succeeded, and here's Gao. And Bamba spread himself. And a great challenge from Bamba. But again, too much space for Dunfermline. Again, it's Gow getting in there. Great pass for Finnegan earlier. Finds himself in a little bit of space here, but you know, last ditch from the defender, and that's what they've been doing recently. Bamba and Wilson, they have been defending well. Must have to be uh, hoping that the ball won't blow away this time, but it doesn't look very promising in that respect. Hey, hey, uh, kept it there. Latapi's Corner going nowhere fast though. A bit wind assisted. Oh, great little flick from Alan Gow here, as I say. He's allowed to come off. Spins into the space. Lovely little flick from Gow. Well, he doesn't quite catch it, Finnegan. And then, well, you have to say, even at the second opportunity, it's pretty much an open goal from a tight angle. A little bang in the head. That the dugout will come off worse, I would imagine. Midway point of the first half. Bamba. Thompson for Ross. Thompson. Lima, Ross, Thompson, Latapi, has got away from Shields easily, could slip Finnegan in, does, Carl Finnegan, and Bamba, there to meet it again. 
Lima for Finnegan. Not too many of his teammates gambled on the centre. Crawford holding it up. Dakan helping it on. Tam Scobie, who's in the Scotland under-19 squad, for a few qualifiers coming up over the next couple of weeks. Crawford. Simmons. Shields. Young now. It's gone out. Four. I uh, love a little flick earlier between Alan Gow and Finnegan and Rangers fans will be wondering what they're going to see from this fella when he goes through to Glasgow. I think he'll have the opportunity to play with better players than he is at the moment. And he's got to come to the fore and show that he can produce the goods. Alan Gow, which he's done in bits and bobs this season, but not over the whole period. And both himself and Kit Broadfoot going from much smaller clubs. See if they can hack it with the bigger, more experienced players. Crawford. Me your head. Gao leaves it for Latifi. Thompson. Gao. Thompson's caught out by Young, but Lima will present it to Scobie. Latifi. Gao. Offside against Liam Craig. The final day of the SPL tomorrow, the race for a European place. Hearts are at Kilmarnock, and we'll have all the goals from Aberdeen Rangers as they happen as well from 1 o'clock on Satanta Sports 1 tomorrow. Thompson, it's bubbled away from him, and Dakan now is going to run into Darren Barr. Well, I'll tell you what, the groundsmen won't have to come out into these wide positions and replace any divots because they're not getting <laughs> any width in the game at all. The, we, we said before the game and the, and the team graphics that they were going to play narrow in midfield and that's what they're doing. It's, everything's going right down the middle of the pitch at the moment. Craig. Foul by Young. Especially with the conditions today have been breezy and the wind swirling about. It is a day for getting it wide. You know, and getting some decent crosses into the box because it's going to be a difficult day for goalkeepers to, you know, to read the crosses coming in where they swirl and win. But neither side at the moment look anywhere capable of doing so. Finnegan for Gal. And to be fair, Alan Gow, it wasn't a bad ball in, but you've got two players standing in the middle of the goals with no movement whatsoever, and nobody on the left-hand side even bothered to get forward. You can watch here as the ball's laid off. You've got two guys in the middle. Oh, don't think I'm going to bother today making any movement. Wasn't the worst ball in, he played it into an area, but nobody on the left-hand side had even gambled at the far post. Falkirk well, like coming here, they're unbeaten in their last six visits to East End Park. To be fair this season, I think so most. <laughs> and that's why they're in the position they're in, confirming which we'd have to say is disappointing. So I agree with Scott Bow that's you know I think they were they have made much more strides forward next season under Stephen Kenny had they had they finished this season, but well that's all gone up in smoke. Bar Milne. Thompson.
from Finland's seven year stay in the SPL over. Yeah, and I don't care what anybody says, you know, Tom Fremlin would have been a much bigger asset to the SPL than, than Gretna are going to be, in my opinion. But, you know, rules are rules, and, you know, they've finished bottom, and, and they're going to have to go. But, you know, they're not the first club to do it. Hibs, a few years ago, did it, then they United, and they've both rebuilt. So they've got to take heart from that. Bamba. Well, that'll be. Here's Alan Gow. Jack Ross was begging for the ball out on this uh, right hand side, but did not receive it as we head towards the half hour mark. No goals, not much sign of one. You might have to think about this one for a while, but uh, you can vote for the man of the match later by calling or texting us and if you agree with Craig Burley's choice and you'll pick that as the winner you'll get a signed shirt from the Bank of Scotland man of the match <laughs> Stephen Simmons for his captain Greg Shields Cricket Falker. Casper okay. Schmeichel, the son of the Manchester United legend Peter, but Casper is on Manchester City's books. He's had a successful second half of the season on loan here. Remains to be seen whether he'll come back for another loan, as we said. Manchester City in no position to make that decision yet. Ross. And offside against Stephen Thompson after Finnegan had knocked it down for him. Well, they worked it well. A good diagonal ball in. It's a good knockdown and it's a midfielder making the run. When the heads it. Just, just offside, I think. But it was better play getting a midfielder forward, getting a fifth man running, and getting a decent delivery up to the striker and something to work off. Thompson. Latifi, Alan Gow is just going to skip away from him and Roddy McKenzie will gather. throw Virgil Simmons now Shields well done permanent show a bit of urgency here Dakan just go be quickly upon him Bamba Darren Young Young looking for Dakan. Um, Birchall might fancy a bit of that. It's going to drop for McCunney. And it's away by Scobit. Shields. 
Taka. Taka delivers. Virtual being closely watched in there, very closely. Falkirk can't dig it out yet, but now they will through Liam Craig. Some very fancy footwork from Gao. And he was quickly stopped in his tracks. Well, I felt they might have a little push and Bottrell as this ball came in. Well, he does put the hands in the top of Bottrell's shoulder, but I think it would have been a lot. There certainly was one or two looking at the referee, but he was having absolutely none of it. Your head. Cunny. Thompson for Finnegan. Now Gal. Sol Bamba. Ten minutes to go in this first half. On the last weekend of the SPL season. Scobie. Got caught. Cry of agony from Scobie. And a free kick to Falker. Yeah, it comes in a little bit late. Catches him in the bottom of the leg as he flicked it over to Queen. Well, maybe something will happen here for Falkirk. Russell Natterby standing over it. Darren Barr's come up along with Kenny Milne and Scobie to join Gow and Finnegan in there. Who couldn't Russell Natterby pick out? A false run up. But now it's coming from Russell Latapi and Scott Wilson in command. And now a free kick for them permanent. Falkirk this season beats both Rangers and Celtic first time since 1913. But they managed to beat both the Glasgow Giants in the same season in the league. Of course, they also accounted for Celtic in the League Cup on penalties. They will look back on it generally as being a pretty good season, all things considered. Semi-finalists in the League Cup as well. It could still be a memorable season for Dunfermline, despite relegation. Scottish Cup final ahead. It would be quite something if they managed to get the better of Celtic a week today. McCunny. Scott Wilson. Asper Michael just going to get there ahead of Virgil. Scobie being tracked by Duckham. Gao, Finnegan chasing, oh, he's had his shirt tugged there by Greg Shields, now Eddie Smith racing across, it's a free kick, and there's a card coming out for the Dunfermline captain, it's a yellow card. Well, he didn't deem him his last man or he was going away from goals, but, well, he's a lucky boy, Shields, because they're getting a mix-up here and he pulls them back, the referee's deemed it that it wasn't a goal-scoring opportunity, you can argue against that. It's certainly very obvious, to say the least. Shields booked. And what can Falkirk conjure up here? Latapi and Gal standing over it. He was, he was lucky he was running away from goals there, across the pitch. If he's running towards it, then it's a red card. No doubt about that, but this is an excellent position. You'd fancy Latipi from here to take it. And maybe the left foot of Gow trying to come round the wall to Ronnie McKenzie's right. 
Here comes Russell Latterby, and he's decided to go low. And, uh, put it straight at the keeper. Oh, maybe it should have been. Oh, no, it took it. It was a wasted opportunity, to say the least, from an excellent position. Typifies the match so far. Falkert have had the better chances. It was an excellent area there for the free kick. Great chance for Finnegan. He should have done better away. Can't really recall Casper Michael having much to do at all, really. Dakan. Shots and the efforts and goal. And it's not really telling the story of a team from Fremlin. I've got a Scottish Cup final coming up. And Falkirk have been the better side, been the more progressive, and have had a bit more quality. Which I'd have to say it doesn't bode well for a week's time for Stephen Kenny's men with the changes he has to make. And he has made today. The players come in, as you said earlier, Ian, playing for places. And at the moment, I think lackluster. He's doing them a favour. They certainly have to pick the performance up. And the crutch is nearby after that hip operation. From Perlman's first corner. We're inside the last five minutes of the first half. Muirhead takes it. Bamba! Unable to steer it towards goal, even though he wasn't uh, particularly challenged. Backhand's got a free kick. Well, they might as well whip this in towards the goalkeeper and pile the bodies in and put them under pressure. Hit a decent area. Especially in the swirling wind. Darren Young does send it into a decent area, but it's comfortably cleared. Jamie McCunney will take this. McCunney going long towards Bamba. Finnegan on his own, but giving Muirhead a problem. Liam Craig's going to run onto, onto this. Scobie. Neil Lima had uh, Darren Young breathing down the back of his shirt and he clipped him as well. well I'm just watching Jack Ross just down beneath us in the commentary position here is the right back he's looking to get forward there there was a switch you play on in fact every time Falkirk build up down the left there is a diagonal ball on if they can see it out to the right hand side where there's acres of space out here because McCunney's tucking in and that Dunfermline left but they're not spotting it at the moment they're just trying to bang their heads in the wall going down the middle if they can just get a little bit of width fork up from the likes of Ross on this right hand side then you do feel they'll do they will get a bit bit of quality into the box Dark out here's Lima Thompson. Well, they might just give it to Ross now. Ross aiming to bring Scobie into it. Craig. But there's no return. And Greg Shields can lob it up towards Burchill. Well, that's what I'm saying. And if they can get a switch, they switch it to the right there, then they walked it back over to the left to Scobie. If they can get that ball, that switch is on all day long. And it will stretch them firmly. It's something John Hughes will have to be looking at. He'll be telling his players at half time get the full backs forward, suck them into one side, and get the diagonal ball and get it out the other. That 
was a high one from McKenzie. Latterby. Ross for Gao. Closely watched by Wilson. Virtual chasing. Darren Barr cut across. Darren Young now. Simmons. Last minute of the half. Well, I don't think Gordon Strachan will be particularly worried with what he's seen at the moment. Fairman side haven't got going. Look a shadow of the side that have been winning games in the last few weeks. Of course, no McManus today, especially. Guy that's been on form. No Stephen Glass, who's been in the engine room along with Gary Mason. Thompson. Hardly any seconds added on, and uh, hardly any action in the first half. From Ferdinand Falkirk, not exactly putting on an end of season show here. It's half time, it is nil nil.
John Hughes will be pretty happy, I guess, with the, the way his team have uh, shaped up here. Maybe lacking a little bit of cutting edge in the final third. They've passed it well and they've created some opportunities. Yeah, and that's what happens. I mean, if you get Latipe on the ball as often as he's been this first half, then, you know, I mean, he looked, he looked to me in the first 25 minutes that he was really enjoying, you know, having so much possession. But that's also down to Dunfermline. They cannot afford to let him pull the strings just outside their box and you know that just means that midfield runners can go off him and he has the vision to pick out passes and he is controlling things in there and you have the feeling that if he really wants to to take this game and to to get a goal of somewhere it's going to come through him but um the Dunfermline, Dunfermline aren't making it difficult enough for no, that he's strolling it isn't he and that, that's exactly what, what i was saying you know it's, it's the it's the pace at, at which Dunfermline are doing things it's the it's the the will to win it's something that i'm, I'm sure that, that stephen kenny's in there saying right now you cannot switch off from what we have done over the past months. We have to build on it. There's Gordon Strachan on crutches after his hip operation, still in recovery mode. And he's too wily a campaigner to read too much into what he's seeing today from Dunfermline. The personnel may well be similar next weekend at Hamden, but surely the approach will be totally different. Uh, they are 90 minutes away, potentially, from winning the Scottish Cup. They've been in good form of late. But big changes, of course, in the lineup today. Eight switches and another couple of changes made during the halftime interval with Callum Woods replacing Scott Muirhead and uh, a new shape up front as well with uh, Jim Hamilton replacing Freddie Dakan. Let's see if the quality improves for the film and let's see if the attitude improves as well. Back to Craig and back to Ian. Cheers, Rob. Falkirk will start the second half, looking for a whitewash of Dunfermline this season. In fact, uh, Dunfermline haven't scored a goal against Falkirk this season. They will be hoping that changes. Well, I was going to say with Dunfermline bringing on Jim Hamilton that they have a physical presence in the box for sure, but well, they didn't really get many balls out of that box in the first half, to be fair, to give Boxley and Cropper anything to go on. So, a double change for De Perman in an attempt to liven things up. Well, no change in shape, Stevie Crawford will just come out into this right-hand side, the dark one, and, and Boxley through the middle. Here is Crawford, who has showed too much of that to Ross. Shields helping it on. And that's a foul by Crawford. Stevie Crawford returning after eight games out with a back injury. Yeah, I thought they might have stuck Crawford in behind Butchell and Hamilton and just matched up with Falkirk, but you know, I did speak in the first half about the lack of width from both sides. And Certainly, Dakar was put on that right hand side to give, confirming that. And you know, I can't really remember him touching the ball, to be fair. And with Crawford not being a natural wide player, I don't see them getting too much from this right hand side. Liam Craig for Lima. Craig. Stephen Simmons is running back. Jim Hamilton on as a second half sub. Likewise, this man, Callum Woods, on loan from Liverpool initially. Then signed. It's his first appearance since Jack. Latapi. Woody McKenzie in goal for them firmly today. Doris De Vries has a slight wrist problem, but that shouldn't prevent him lining up in the cup final. Latapi able to keep it going. And it's come to Jack Ross. Gow! And Greg Shields made an important contribution then for Dunfermline to keep Gow in check. But it's not away yet, and Thompson! Stephen Thompson! Scores early in the second half. Falkirk have the lead at the home of their rivals. Well, I'll tell you what, it could have been a penalty just before when the ball was played into the box because you watch Greg Seals at the top of your picture, he's got a hold the Alan Gauss shot, but they make a right pig's ear of it. 
them firmly and they just don't clear it and the goalkeeper's way out of position but it's the first decent ball into the box I spoke about wide positions and getting decent delivery in to cause problems it's a real melee in there and Dunfermline the don't deal with it and Falkirk, well, they stick it in the back of the net and deserve the lead Stephen uh, Thompson has got a yellow card for that celebration uh, not held by those fans coming on to join in he was booked but we have a goal at last Stephen Thompson got the winner against Celtic in March that is only his second goal of this season well it's not rocket science I mean, if you keep banging your head against the wall going down the middle all the time you're not going to create many chances virtual frustrated if you get a bit of width into your game as Falkert just produced from the right hand side nothing clever about it just a bit of width so I'm decent into the box to go on something that Dunfermline have to defend something they didn't do it's now raining a wet and windy day in the Kingdom of Fife and all Falkirk going to blow away Dunfermline for the fourth time this season Kenny changing his team around today. He has four players for the cup final for various reasons. But they haven't given him much so far. This side. Came to Hamilton at a fair force. Thompson. Woods. Darren Bart in front of Birchall. And a foul anyway by Birchall. He's going to be summoned to the referee, Eddie Smith. Well, the heavens have opened now. Three at Dunfermline. But Falkirk are happy. They've started the second half very well indeed. And well, Dunfermline don't deal with a ball into the box. And they don't clear it. And Thompson was 80 pounds few overzealous supporters it's a corner the thing is as well you didn't see it clearly but Greg Shields was tugging an Alan Gauss shot as that ball came in just before the goal and he is on a yellow card already as well Falkirk are singing in the rain at the moment and they're looking for a second goal Jim Hamilton has steered that away Simmons giving it away. Latapi. Russell Latapi went for the cute chip. Well, he sends Greg Seals for a pie here with his little flick. Watch. See you later, son. And he noticed the goalkeeper. He's a bit tight. There's nothing much he can do there. He can't get the power with no back left from that position. And he goes for the cheeky lever. Little clip over Mackenzie. Certainly one player, Latipi, on the pitch that is capable of doing something like that. Yes, he'll be 39 next season, but he has signed on for another year as a player. Well, he's not going to run about and graft and, and win tackles, we know that, at that age, but he never has, Russell Latipi, but what he will give is that bit of quality and he can pick a pass and, and see a pass that most other players can't see and gives him that something different. Darren Barr for Jack Ross. Woods. Confirming going down, but in the cup final and of course in Europe. Next season, Stephen Kenny had a fond miss. Europe in his time with Derry. 
where he beat Gretna. Jack Ross will take this throw. Scobie missed it, but Milne covering. And Milne stumbling, but surviving. Vitor Lima. Well, that's a beat. Ross will go ahead of him. Thompson, the goal scorer for Lima. Lima again. Um, Scott Wilson in the nick of time. Jim Hamilton. He's presented that straight to Latapi. Oh, Latapi almost weaving his way through. Oh, well, he plays an early ball there at the left. And Liam Craig's away, he's gone. I think they're a too clever. McCunny. Wilson. Hamilton. Darren Barr. Kenny Mill. Uh, Craig took it away from Scobie there. Scobie gets it eventually. Bar for Ross. Gal. Lovely touch for Thompson. Can he escape the clutches of Woods? Gal. Oh, lovely one, two. Oh, that is brilliant. Alan Gal with a farewell goal for Falkirk. Linking up superbly with Latapi. That was Falkirk at their very best. Well, it's men against boys at the moment. It's pathetic defending, it's static defending, watching the ball. And it's great play from Falkirk and it's good movement from Gow well Latipi doesn't even move he just flicks it back to him absolutely simple defender standing not bothering simple and easy and Gow's eighth goal of the season and uh, Lima quick to applaud Latipi's part in it tracking a runner would help I imagine somebody tra Go in, just go your run. You're playing a one-two is never a good idea. Level. There's a long way back in this game for Dunfermline. They're going to have to do something they haven't managed to, against Falkirk this season. Score. Young's cross, Hamilton in there. And uh, half hearted appeal from Hamilton. Well, it's one of the few times Casper Michael. What are we going? 56 minutes, he's had the ball in his hands. I mean, he said, absolutely nothing to do. Absolutely nothing this afternoon so far. Gow again, he scored a last minute winner against Dunfermline at the Four Kirk Stadium earlier in the season. Liam Craig's going to get a yellow card for diving. I believe. And, uh, Scott Wilson wasn't particularly happy with him. Wilson does nothing wrong. What's the referee? Five yards away. You're not going to get away with that. But I'm afraid, Ian, it's back to the old ways, watching them firmly. Back to how they were at the start of the season, at Christmas time, poor defending not creating chances 
For six weeks there, they were performing well, but old habits die hard. And Very poor so far. You've got to say it was a great finish from Gow once he did get in there. Despite their uh, recent revival, the Vermin are heading for their 22nd defeat of the season, which says it all. Not good enough. Not good enough. Well, they work it well down the side, and it was Gow who flicks it on initially. Woods do well to get back in, but Gow after his initial flick. They're thinking he's going to play a cross in the box. No, I'm just going to play a one-two. It's pretty simple. If you're not going to follow me, then I'm just going to stick it in the back of the net. Ross for Craig. Wilson. Thompson. Latapi. Stephen Simmons for Greg Shields. Confirmly looking for a quick response to those two Falkirk goals, which prompted a bit of a party moment. But easy, please. <laughs> I think they're rubbing it in, to be fair, but, uh, you know, Falkirk have been allowed to play. And did we say earlier, the Fremlin are playing for cup final places, well, Stephen Kenny will be looking around at what's not in the pitch and what he can use for next week. And, and so far, not too many of them. If they're in doubt and playing, or if they're on the fringes in Stephen Kenny's mind, they're playing their way into the side at the moment. Falkirk look like they will end the season with three straight wins. And Leicester Vernon can spark a recovery. You can vote for your man of the match later by calling or texting. Those are the numbers, and if you agree with Craig Burley's choice and you're picked out as the winner, you'll get a signed shirt from the man of the match. Hamilton away by Ross and now Liam Craig Lima could get Falkirk going again precise pass to Gao but he's offside Falkirk went on a losing run of eight matches which ultimately cost them a top six finish but Despite that, there have been plenty of positives to take out of this season for John Hughes' side. And four wins out of four over Don Pomlin will certainly go down well with their fans. Simmons. Shields. Stevie Crawford. McCunny. Skimmed off Hamilton's head. John Hughes' side sitting pretty on a 2 0 advantage. No goals. In the other two games today so far, Dundee United Motherwell, St Mirren against him and S. Kelly Fissel. For two goals early in the second half here for Falkirk. And Gow in his last match for Falkirk before heading to Rangers. 
scored last week and scored this week. Well, they want to go out in high. How much he'll play a part next season remains to be seen. I think he'll find it tough through in Glasgow. But you just never know. Maybe it'll erase his game. Well, he's got to really. Once you get through there, you've got to take your opportunity. He certainly took his goal well. Go. Latapi. Gal. Latapi! Well, that would have been exquisite, to say the least. Oh, they're just taking the biscuit now. I mean, they've just been allowed to play. You watch this, he pops it into Alan Gow. Nobody's in front, blocking off that ball into feet as they should be. Midfielder should be there stopping that ball into Gow's feet. And he just rolls it back at will. And he tries a cheeky little outside of the foot cross to the back post. certainly uh, felt that challenge from Hamilton to be fair you normally do when Jim Hamilton challenges you off sign against Gow Aiming that towards Hamilton is always game. Schmeichel smothers though, and that's been one of his quieter afternoons. He arrived at the club just as they uh, went through that losing streak. But, uh, he's proved to be invaluable to them, really, and John Hughes hoping that he can secure him on loan again, but maybe other clubs south of the border might have that in mind as well. but he's offside, the flag is up. Well, it's better play from the Fairman's. It's a little bit of link-up, at least. And he's half a yard offside, Stevie Cropper. It was a lovely little reverse ball from Mark Butcher, but it just drifted Stevie Cropper from that right-hand side into an offside position as Stephen Kenny thinks about bringing on an informed player in Tom McManus. And uh, Tom McManus will be eager to have a pop at Falkirk here because he was at Falkirk early in the season, but it didn't really work out for him there. When he made a few substitute appearances, felt he was never given a chance. Although he was an, an unused sub in the Scottish Cup for Falkirk, which meant that he's cup tied and can't take part next week. Crawford, seems to be aiming that one towards Craig Burley. Here comes the change then. Stephen Simmons is going to trudge off, and on comes Tam McManus. Didn't score it in his fleeting substitute appearances for Falkirk, but he got recent winners for Pomponin against Dundee United and St Mirren to really make them believe that they might stay up. But they ran out of steam at the last weekend. And Manus, though, has proved to be rather popular in a short space of time at East End Park. And how he would relish getting a goal against Falkirk. He'll have to be looking for Thompson. Ross. Ross is going to be penalised for just catching Callum Woods there. Yeah, he just slid in Jack Ross. It's been pouring with rain here, so the surface is very skiddy. I'm going to dive at it, and you can see how skiddy the surface is. Virgil, Crawford, McManus takes over, Kenny Mill charges towards him. Shields for McCunny.
Wilson. Young. Free kick's going to go against Scott Wilson. And most things have gone against Dunfermline this season. They have won four of the last five games in the SPL, but it turned out to be too little too late. For Kirk, which is one defeat in their last seven games, having a strong end to a commendable season. Down with a little nudge on Hamilton. Crawford. But Manus is not going to be allowed in. Tomorrow it's the race for a European place. Hearts are at Kilmarnock, and so are we. And we'll have all the goals as they go in at Petodri, where Aberdeen face Rangers. Plus, we'll be keeping a check on the champion Celtic at Hips as well. It all starts from one tomorrow. And I read somewhere that Jim Jeffers is going to keep the saying he'll be doing hearts a favour. Absolutely not. Very single minded down at Kilmarnock. They all want to go out in a high. I don't think Aberdeen should worry about that. Got to consider beating. Rangers. Crawford. Manus. McCunny. 20 minutes left. For Dunfermline to rally. Shields. Hamilton will fancy a bit of that. McManus. He needs some help and he gets it from Woods. Young. Shields! He didn't catch it too badly, Greg Shields. Well, you won't see too many goals in Greg Shields' CV as a defender. But it's set for him. And it's not a bad strike to be fair to him. Always oh, is going a little bit high and wide. But, well, well worth a go. Bamba taking charge. I think that'll be a yellow card for Vitor Lima. Yeah, I think he had a problem there, Lima. He was unsure what Bamba was going to do. And not quite sure Bamba knew either, been a centre half going forward, but positive for play from the big centre half. Paul Kirk are going to bring on Pedro Moutinho soon. But they've got a free kick to defend first. Greg Shields takes it. Stephen Thompson unable to clear it. Bamba. Gao. Stripped by Wilson. Free kick. And Scott Wilson's going to get a yellow card. Just uh, back from suspension. Well, Scott Wilson, little clip at the heels, but it was the centre half partner. Just ten seconds earlier, I think I've seen it all. We've tried to an overhead kick from the edge of the box. <laughs> a bit ambitious to say the least. Well, sadly, we're going to be deprived of uh, Russell Latterby for the closing stages. Stand out on the pitch today, the 38-year-old, and um, thankfully he has agreed to play on for another year at Falkirk. A delight to watch. Yet again today, and he's been replaced by Pedro Moutinho. Well, after playing today, he might have great to play on for another five or six. <laughs> very, very easy for him in midfield. And he's used the ball very well. Liam Craig chasing this. He's got Scobie nearby, but that's going to trickle out. And 
It's been a goal at Love Street. Stuart McCaffrey has got his first goal for the best part of three years to give Cali Thistle the lead against St Mirren. McCaffrey, who hasn't uh, seen much first-team football this season, but might do next season with Darren Dodds on his way. Side against Finnegan. I've just gone back to latter day. I mean, from Dunfermline's point of view, if you're up against the side with a playmaker and somebody that can pass the ball, you have to stop that. You've got to get tight, you've got to stop him play. He didn't do that from the first minute, he dictated the game. McManus, Darren Young. Hamilton, McManus, that's decent, Birchall thought he got a little nudge there. Yeah, it was clever from Scobie at the back post, it was a good ball in from McManus, you just watch Scobie as this ball drop McBurchill, you know, he just don't quite see it there, but he just, a little nudge on Burchill, as the ball comes in, a little nudge on him, just puts him off, I don't know if he was getting there. Not enough for a penalty kick, just enough to put him off. Offside. You can vote for your Bank of Scotland man of the match by calling or texting us. Those are the all important numbers. And if you agree with Craig Burley's choice, he'll get a signed shirt from the man of the match today. <laughs> He's certainly the leading contender. Uh, Russell Latterby, Alan Gow. Ending his time at Falkirk impressively as well today. Darren Young. Well, if that had gone in, we might have been in for an intriguing last quarter of an hour. Well, at least they're having a go. At least they're having one or two attempts in goal, albeit they haven't been on target. Plus one from Shields not too long ago. This time it's Young on the spin. No backlift at all. He's going for that far corner. It's all he can do there. But really, Casper Michael's had a very quiet day. And well done, Fernland. Not enough efforts in goal. Scott Wilson. Woods. Thompson, free kick. So Cali Thistle one up at St Mirren, but still nil-nil between Dundee United and Motherwell at Tannadice. Not exactly a feast of goals in the final day of the season, which you, you would have thought, you know, every team would just have gone for broke. Went all out, nothing to play for really in terms of the relegation, no pressure whatsoever. But it all seems a bit tight. Falkirk look like they are definitely going to finish up with more points than Hibs this season. But of course they will uh, officially stay in the bottom half. Such is life in the days after the split. Crawford for Greg Shields. And it's deflected off Kenny Milne and Schmeichel can't stop it going for the corner. Well, he hasn't had uh, one of his busier days, Casper Schmeichel, but he might be tested here. Crawford's corner is not bad at all. And McManus hits the bar and Crawford's going to... Drill it back in, and that's a very good take from Schmeichel. Yeah, good hands from the goalkeeper. Second time round, but he was beating all hands down for McManus header. Well, Martinio and Gao lurking. Alan Gao trying to go around the back. Well, keeper was beaten here. 
as this ball comes in. You wouldn't expect Cam McManus to get on the end of it. He's not the tallest of players. Well, player on the line can't get it either. Keeper static. And this is good hands. Ian Craig will take this free kick as Falkirk look to inflict further misery on their local rivals. Tom McManus, who was at Falkirk for a while, would have loved to see that one drop chest in. Yeah, and what a blow for the lad that he can't play next week. Huge occasion. You've got a player in form, a player playing with confidence. Well, and he'll not be able to play any part. I can tell you from a player's point of view, it's so frustrating. You sit there and watch your teammates either pick a trophy up when it all goes wrong for them, be one or the other. That's a pretty daft rule, really, because he didn't actually play for Falkirk in the Scottish Cup, but he was on the bench. Same uh, thing has happened with Stephen Glass as well. Uh, of course, Gary Mason is suspended for the Cup final, and Jim O'Brien is on loan from Celtic. Quite rightly, uh, although it's unfortunate for him, isn't allowed to play. towards the last 10 minutes and Falkirk are going to bring on Stephen O'Donnell who is due to leave the club in the summer maybe fancies his uh, chances down south he's turned down a new deal with Falkirk former Arsenal youngster he's going to take the place of Liam Cray and O'Donnell he came from Arsenal two years ago Comes on for his farewell appearance. <laughs> Hamilton. Scooby. Finnegan trying to sneak in, but Wilson dealt with it. Finnegan's got there eventually, though. Now O'Donnell just on. Moutinho. Scobie. And Moutinho. McManus. Another card coming out here for Scobie. Well, he certainly puts his heel about. Scobie, and uh, well, he does leap with the shoulder, Tam Manus. Full Kirk born. Tam Scobie gets a yellow card, the fourth full Kirk player to be booked. Now, Tom Vernon need a goal here to stand any chance of taking anything out of this game. Crawford's free kicks. Michael fancies that. Back by Birchall. Go on, Peg! Go on, Peg! Go on. Scott Wilson. Hey. Darren Barr. Get up. Get up. Just got caught then, but what a season he's had at the heart of Falkirk's defence. Won their Player of the Year awards. In the week, O'Donnell overhit that to Scobie. Done for PL season, petering out here at East End Park. It's not been much of a contest for Kurt. Fully deserving of their lead and looking like they might even add to it.
McManus. He did hit the bar, but he's lost it there, and now here's Thompson. And there's plenty of space again for Falker. Moutinho. Gao. Ross. Oh, Thompson just unable to connect. Oh, that was a great chance. He just misses it completely, Thompson. Because when this ball's fed into him, he's clear. He's not under any pressure. He goes for the little side foot from about 10 yards. Well, oh, that should have been a third. McCammy. Woods. Darren Young. McManus. Crawford. Shields. McManus. Paul Kirk are going to make their final change. John Stewart, who they signed early season from Aberdeen. But he hasn't really played much of a part, mainly due to injury, is going to come on as Alan Gow's Paul Kirk career comes to an end. He was on the score sheet again this week, as he was last week, but Gao heads off to Ibrox in the summer, and he'll be playing against Porker next season for Rangers. The Porker fan singing Alan Gao's name. And he has given them plenty to sing and shout about in his time at Porker. McManus, McCunney, Woods, McCunney, Shields for Crawford, Young, Wilson, Hamilton, Young, this could be Dunfermline's best move of the match, McManus. And then again, Scobie had other ideas. Stevie Crawford's corner. Hamilton not allowed to get near it. Scott Wilson desperately trying to get there, but won't. They all get caught underneath it. Somebody has to be taking a chance of spinning around the back. But they don't. Just looking at Dunfermline in terms of the cup final coming up, and if they play, and especially defend the way they have today, then, for me, they don't stand a chance, because it's been back to the old ways for them. The goals they get, they've given away today, the two goals have been very sloppy. And I thought they'd eradicated that from them game in recent weeks. They've been solid, they've held a good line. But today, well, maybe they've just switched off. Maybe they think they can they can do that and just switch it back on next week. Well, it doesn't work like that. And they'll take into the cup final a very poor performance. Callum Woods. Caught it really well, but Michael saw it coming. And uh, well, it takes him a little longer to uh, get out of the ground with those crutches. Uh, Gordon Strachan's away to beat the traffic. Yeah, he'll know it's as the lads were saying in the studio. It's you know it will be a different confirmed side next week, but yeah, just be taking one, a little look at one or two players and one or two things Stephen Kenny might be trying, but I think he'll be pretty pleased. Gordon with what he saw in terms of the way they've defended. McCunny offside here against Mark Birchall. Michael has taken it out of the flag up anyway. Which kind of sums up Dunfermline's day. Well, that's where Birchall's at his best. Any little ball slid down between centre-half and full-back. That's where he's made his money. Certainly early in his career, well, you'd have to say when that ball was played, he looked level. And, well, the keeper absolutely smashes him on the way out. 
from his giddy surface, it would have been a penalty, but he said little of that, Mark Butchell, like, you know, down the sides. If you play a play like that, with his pace, there's no point just slinging high balls into the box. Well, Don Thurman have only managed to score 26 league goals this season, which is the lowest in British football. One less than East Stirling. And for the fourth time this season, they failed to score against Falkirk, and they're about to lose to Falkirk for the fourth time as well. To John Hughes, going out and winning ways. It's been a, a very good season for them. It's been progression. You know, finishing top of the bottom half of the SPL. You can't ask for much more than that with what John's got at his disposal. He lost Stokes as well at a very important part of the season, don't forget. Yes, if Stokes had uh, stayed on, they certainly would have uh, finished in the top six. Here's Martinho. Oh, that is... A superb strike from Pedro Martinho. It's 3-0, and what a way to end the season for Fulker. Well, just go and have a bath now, son. You're going to go out in style, you might as well just smash one in the back of the net. And, well, they've deserved it. You know, they're firm and happen at the races, and the keeper's got no chance there. And Well, they just sit off him. There's runners from midfield, and he says, well, I'm not going to pass it there, I'm just going to smash it in the back of the net. Terrific end to the season, I was just saying that the job John Hughes has done for Falkirk. Well, well they won 3 0 here in November when Anthony Stokes scored a hat trick. But they've had three different scorers today. Same scoreline though. And Don Fermin absolutely whitewashed by Falkirk this season. Well, let me tell you, from Stephen Kenny, he's got a huge week ahead of him. Try to prepare this team and this performance today for a huge match next week and they've got to go there and they've got to make a game it well on the evidence of today he's got some serious thinking to do about how he approaches it there's only a minute added on a disappointing day for Don Fermanen who will take their leave of the SPL they'll be in Europe next season they're in the cup final next week but they won't be in the SPL when the new season comes around. The permanent pretty awful today, McManus. Greg Shields, the captain, and Stephen O'Donnell quick to block it. Hawker ending the season with three wins on the bounce. Hamilton, Birchill. And Callum Woods firing that well wide, and that might be the last action in the wind and the rain at East End Park. Don Furman heading down to the first division. But uh, John Hughes' side with Russell Latterby orchestrating things for most of the match have looked the part again, and when they spray the passes around, it really makes them one of the better teams to watch in the SPL. A comfortable win for John Hughes and Falkirk. An excellent way to end a uh, pretty good season, to say the least. The outcome never really in doubt here. Stephen Kenny's done firmly down and very much out of this game. They'll move on to the cup final, but it's going to take a massive, massive performance to get the better of Celtic. Alan Gow ending his Falkirk career with a goal. Stephen Thompson put Falkirk on their way here. And Martinia wrapped it up at the end, but uh, Russell Latterby the star of the show, really. Walker with a very big backing here today, applauding their fans, and vice versa. Four wins out of four over Dunfermline. How good does that feel for a Falkirk fan? And how good does it feel that Russell has to be assigned on to play for another year? Falkirk have had an excellent season. Semi-finalists in the League Cup, they beat Rangers, they beat Celtic in the league. They had that eight-game losing streak when Anthony Stokes departed, which cost them a top-six finish. But on their day, they are a very good team to watch, and some of their fans are going to get some decent souvenirs here. Paul Kirk 
certainly a club who are progressing fast. But Berlin, though, took absolutely the ages to clear it and couldn't do so in the end. Stephen Thompson rolling in the first, early in the second half. It didn't take them long to get a second, and it was a beauty from Alan Gow after he linked up with Latifi. Save the best till last. Well, Moutinho might claim that he scored the goal of the game, although Gow might think otherwise. That's the way to end the season. And Falkirk celebrate. It remains to be seen whether Casper Schmeichel will come back next season. But John Hughes and Falkirk have plenty to look forward to. It ends here. The Vermin nil, Falkirk three. Russell, these end-of-season games don't normally suit you, but you seem to enjoy yourself out there today. Yeah, it's a fantastic atmosphere. It's, it's a derby game, which, which is always good. But um, because we've settled in seventh position, it, it's allowed us to come here and just get the ball down and pass it. Uh, and that's what we wanted to get back to because that's how we've been playing all season. Yeah, you mentioned the fact there was a derby game. Is that what helped motivate your players? Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I think uh, there's a lot of young lads in that dressing room, but uh, a lot of them are, are good professionals, so um, they know they're contracted to folk football club, and they, every time they get a strip on, they're going to do their best for the club, and uh, that was proven here today. And that was Alan Gow's last game today for Falkirk. How do you think he'll fare next season at Rangers? Uh, he's a very talented player. Uh, like everything else, I think he needs an element of luck in the game. So uh, I would suppose if he goes into a team that is rebuilding and, and they get off to a good start, then uh, he can have a really long career there. You're 38 years old and you've just signed another year's contract. Any, any thoughts about packing in or you just, you're enjoying it so much? I'm, I'm having fun here and uh, it's, it's a double rule I'm playing and I'm doing a bit of the coaching here and, um, and I'm having fun. It's a good place to be at. Uh, uh, it's a club that is improving uh, slowly but steadily, and um, if we continue to do that, I'll, I'll be happy to stay here, and, um, and my body's going to determine uh, how much longer I'll play or how much I play next season, so we'll just see how it goes. Well, we've enjoyed watching you again this season. Russell, you're the Bank of Scotland man the match today. Well done. Thank you. John, to all intents and purposes, that was an end-of-season game, but you can't question the application of your players today. No, they've been fantastic. I say that before the game. That's one thing I definitely got off them. They set the benchmark and the standards. Uh, when you go and put a performance like that on, a good passing performance, got our rewards with three goals, um, you know, that's all worthwhile. But that's for the supporters. I know what it means to the supporters. So go and enjoy your pint tonight, and we'll see you next year. And that was Alan Gow's final game for Falkirk today. Were you pleased with his contribution? Gow's has been tremendous. I can't speak highly enough for him. He's a, he's a fantastic guy, great guy to work with, never gives you a minute's problem, ultra professional, just wants to be the best that he can be. And I'll say to Walter and all the staff at um, Rangers are getting a smashing player, not just a football player, but a smashing uh, individual, you know, with good values in life. So um, we wish him all the best. He's been great for me and I've enjoyed the time I've worked with him. And apart from losing Alan Gow, in the last uh, year or two, you've lost the likes of Anthony Stokes and Daryl Duffy. Where do you find players like that? It's just doing your work and doing your homework. Um, we like to jump in the car and get ourselves away doing south and look at all the reserve games and things like that. But, you know, we, we, our um, nets, uh, we cast our net far and wide. And um, sometimes you, we've not got them all right, I have to say that. But, uh, and certainly and, uh, Stokes and guys like Gow, we know what's going on. Um, I'll say, I'll say it again, the expectation at this club could, uh, could be a very dangerous thing. We, uh, the fans will want top six next year, I want top six, but I have to realise the infrastructure, we're still building the infrastructure of the club, um, our training base, our stands and everything like that. So, you know, as long as we keep uh, that nucleus in that uh, dressing room, hopefully we can keep uh, punching well above our weight and if they give me that application, I'm uh, no doubt it will do that. Yeah, the Falkirk fans will always want improvement from their side. Can you meet those expectations next season? It's going to be very difficult. Um, I think this year we budgeted to finish 11th, so we'll finish 7th. Uh, and, and I fully understand where um, what's happening at the club in terms of the infrastructure and uh, the things like that. You know, there's, there's so much going on. Um, and I'm quite sure these boys want to be playing in a stadium that's fully finished. Now, all the money comes out of one pot. I'm fully aware of that. But all I'm trying to do is make the fans aware of that as well. Um, you know, I'm not going to put my head up above the parapet until the fans know exactly what's going on. Um, I will keep punching above our weight because I've no question about the players in that dressing room. But I think, uh, you know, I'm just want to make sure everybody know exactly what's going on at the club because uh, it's me sitting in the front line. Well done this season, John. Enjoy your summer. That was a plug for me to get that in, wasn't it? <laughs> Cheers.